and welcome to this special edition of Our Voices in Nairobi, Kenya, the city under the sun. I am Orion Itangi Shaka. My name is Queen Sambori Saina from KTN News, welcoming you to this VOA KTN collaboration. Nairobi is a bustling city of business and culture on this continent of Africa. And in this episode, we are discussing the dual responsibility of work and motherhood. And explore where parents can look for support. Welcome. Welcome. As much as she might want to, to, to take care of her child, this is not the place for it. And I therefore direct that she immediately re withdraws and she may and she may return to the chamber after she withdraws the child. From Argentina to Italy to New Zealand, even here in Nairobi, working mothers and politicians are demanding that they be enabled to do their jobs with the support of the institutions they work for. On this special edition of Our Voices, we take a look at the challenges of being a working parent and the role or obligation of institutions in providing support to them. Welcome to Our Voices. I'm Oriani Tangishaka from Nairobi. Here with me is my colleague Ayan Bior. And of course, Akisa Wandera. Thank you. And Bori, Queen, Saina, how are you doing? I'm Ladies, fine. thank you so much for having us. having us. Glad to have you. Welcome to Nairobi. Thank you so much. Well, look, this discussion, some might ask, is it a valid discussion? Is it a pressing issue at the moment? Of course, it's a valid discussion and one that certainly should be in the priority list of organizations, governments, and employers. Because when children and work collide, it affects the output of women. Unfortunately, women who cannot withstand this have had to quit employment. From my experience, sometimes I actually work very late in the night and I have to travel away from my family. How I manage this is by um, spending a lot of time with my family and of course making use of my support system. Now, in Africa they say that it takes a village to raise a child, but I think for you to be a well-balanced working mother, it takes a whole community. Absolutely. And as we involve the communities, we should also involve the men in those communities. And I think what's missing in this conversation is the role of men yes. and the role of fathers. So in the next 30 minutes, I hope that we discuss that. Yes, I think this is very timely. About a month ago, we saw um, an incident in Parliament and uh, it has opened our eyes to a lot of loopholes as far as the system is concerned when it comes to supporting working mothers. And this is not just here in Kenya as a country, but it's a, an issue. In the region at large. Precisely, yeah. precisely. Well, ladies, let's begin this important conversation, as you've mentioned, Akisa. Not too long ago, on August 7th of this year, Member of Kenyan Parliament, Honorable Zuleika Hassan, was removed from the chambers because she brought her baby to work. The move by Honorable Hassan highlights the growing demand to make work environments friendlier places for children and their parents. While Hassan said she had no choice but to bring her baby to Parliament, her move provoked the House Speaker, as well as several members of Parliament, to demand her immediate removal from that day's session. Let's take a look. Kwale Women Representative Zuleika Hassan caused a star this summer after she entered the chambers of the National Assembly with a five-month-old baby. This was against the standing orders prohibiting any strangers in the house. Order! The Honorable Atandu, you are out of order. It was also the first time in the history of the Kenyan parliament that a member walked in with his or her baby. Hassan's action made headlines in the international and local media. Her fellow female MPs walked out in solidarity with her action. In this, I've tried really hard not to come with a baby, but today I had an emergency. So what was I supposed to do? We are saying enough is enough. We'll progress with our careers, we'll progress with our motherhood duty, and we'll do it to perfection, both of them. Women rep explained that she was aware of the rule but not aware of the crash which was commissioned in 2013. This being my third baby that I've had in Parliament, um, I was just tired of the institution not being uh, friendly to young mothers and so on. So, um, so, and I knew that it's not allowed. So I was obviously, you know, trying to, you know how you feel just fed up, it's enough is enough. However, the baby nursery is located 400 meters from the parliament building and apparently 
it has never been used. It's happy that uh, Parliament reacted very fast because we can see that most of the things are like extremely new. It actually smells new, even the items. And you can see that it hasn't even been hand they haven't even been handled. I doubt anybody has used it. The only thing is that it's extremely, really far. Like right now we have like, there's a bar right next to the chambers of parliament. And for us, for babies, we have to walk so many minutes away. If your assistance calls you and tells you the baby is crying, if you choose to exclusively breastfeed, then you have to walk a very long distance, then walk back to parliament. That's such a long way. You've missed so much part of the session. The issue continues for Mrs. Hassan as the Speaker of the National Assembly plans to summon her to defend her actions. All of us have children. Speaker, all of us have children. To speak at this house, there is a stranger. And it has never happened since 1963. Mr. Speaker, this is an abuse of the house. And that member must be cited for gross misconduct. Chris, the KTN News. We are so privileged today. We have Honorable Hassan with us, joining us from Mombasa to discuss her experience that she faced. Uh, Honorable Hassan, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, let's begin this discussion. How are you doing there? I, I'm, I'm well, thank you. Very well, very well. Well, to so just begin the conversation, uh, some people may ask, did you really not have a place to take your child that day? Um, uh, the, the important thing to realize with this whole situation is that I made a choice to go with her to work because I could have done what I do other times. I stay at home or I go uh, a bit late to work or leave early in case of any issue. Uh, but because this is my third baby in Parliament um, and in 2013 the Parliamentary Service Commission, which is our employer at Parliament, um, passed an internal policy that we should have a nursery um, at the main parliament building. But six years on, they hadn't implemented it. So it was just, uh, I think it was just um, uh, an unplanned, just, uh, you know, when you just feel you're just fed up. So I just said, well, mm. if they don't want to put a nursery, I'm, I'm going with her to work today. W will the nursery would have had, had someone to care for your baby while you're in parliament? If, if, there, if there was a functional nursery, it would have someone uh, there because um, ideally if it's at the workplace, there should be somebody manning the room. Um, there should be somebody who um, is uh, um, uh, well versed in early childhood development. There should be somebody who has first aid or even a nurse on site in case of you know, any issues. So, and there was, there was never a nursery. Honorable. Leading experts are urging for the support of, of mothers as well as maternity leave. The International Labor Organization recommends 18 weeks of maternity leave. UN Women argues that paid maternity leave is mutually beneficial both for the mother as well as the company that she works for. But the argument that is preventing all of this from becoming a reality is the price tag. There are estimates that maternity leave could cost millions if not billions of dollars depending on population. Um, so I just want to pose the question to you, who was responsible for paying for all of this? Um, I just wanted to say that it's actually um, worth it uh, because studies have said that for every single dollar that is uh, invested, uh, there's $35 in return. Uh, the economy will save on um, health issues, the amount of money they spend uh, in health care. Uh, as we know, for instance, uh, if we breastfeed, it reduces our chances of cervical and breast cancer by 20%, more than 20%. That's significant. Uh, it reduces the chances of the breastfed babies when they're adults, you know, it, uh, of having diabetes and other and many other uh, diseases. Uh, the people who are denying support for working mothers, they don't know what kind of support their mothers had to breast, be able to breastfeed them. So I just think it's an excuse, um, and I think it's a way in which, because now women are, come, are leaving their traditional uh, working roles, I think it's a way with some, uh, some patriarchs uh, to try and keep women away from the workplace, to try and... Um, Honorable Zuleika, this happening to you as a member of parliament and um, a, a senior politician in this country opens our eyes to then what is happening to women across Kenya who don't have the privileges that you have from this particular incident that many might want to look at as a public relation or a publicity stunt. 
what are we doing to then support these underprivileged women to have what you are having or you're asking for as a member of parliament? Actually, um, even if it's a publicity stunt, uh, even if that was the case, I think it's worth it. Well, you know, very worth it. Um, in fact, I developed some cold feet. Um, I had just thought about going with the baby, um, you know, just the day before in the evening. And I developed cold feet. I said, oh, this is, is going to be drama and so on. Then I sat and I spoke to myself and I said, you know, I don't know if I'll have another baby to be able to, to raise this issue uh, in this way because I have been speaking and asking politely before a very long time and nothing has happened. And then um, I thought doing this wasn't just for myself and just for me and baby Mona Baraka. For me, it's like I might not get the nursery, I might not get the support I'm looking for, but I feel by definitely the next crop of members of parliament in 2022 would, you know, I was doing it for them, and actually I was doing it for all the women in the country. Um, and I was saying, because parliament is the lawmaking body of the country, we have to set an example. How do we oversight other government offices uh, uh, and agencies if we ourselves are not implementing uh, some of these things? And then how do we even ask the public sector to do the same if we're not doing it? So for me, uh, it's very important for parliament to be the one that starts this, and uh, it will be much easier then to ask other government agencies and private institutions to, to take it up. Right, uh, Honorable Zuleka, um, it's great to have you on the show. And I want to take us back to about four years ago when uh, Honorable Sarah Correra was heavily criticized for bringing her child to work, and then this happens to you. My question is, who is fooling who? Because back then, Parliament said that they had set up that set up measures to ensure that mothers have a nursing place for, for their children. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of Sarah Correll's uh, situation, um, but from 2013 they passed, the Parliamentary Service Commission passed an internal policy, and there has not been a single nursery, and uh, there are several members of Parliament who've had babies since then, and they will collaborate uh, my statement. Immediately after the incident, they quickly made up uh, one room. I even went with the media the next day to go and look at the room, and it's not functional until now. Everything was brand new. It wasn't even dusty at all, completely, even the smell, um, and so on and so forth, because I wouldn't allow Parliament to try and discredit me. Um, and uh, it's still not functional till now. So I've written a letter to the speaker, um, and the good thing I'd like to report is that we're working together well with uh, the leadership. Uh, there's there's um, goodwill uh, on the leadership of parliament to get the nursery uh, up and running. Uh, I've recommended you know, what needs to be available for it to be uh, functioning. So, so, so that's the, the, the situation. So, Honorable, um, I'm really glad to hear that there is some progress uh, happening in, in Parliament. Uh, but what can we expect for, for Kenyan women all over? Um, are there any bills that we should expect from you? Um, you know, and any, any laws that, uh, that you think should be highlighted moving forward so that this progress is also seen nationwide and not just in Parliament? Um, so currently I'm also working with the leadership to come up with standing orders to change, to amend the standing orders, sorry, so that we are able to go with uh, babies into uh, the chambers. Uh, so we're just starting that and then I'll need to collect signatures from 50 of my colleagues for it now to go for consideration uh, to the committee um, of, of, of powers and privileges. Um, and for the, also the committee for rules, in charge of our rules, um, and then, you know, for us to, uh, to adopt later. Um, then there's been Honorable Sabina Chege who brought a bill previously um, asking for the same, like that there should be nursery in the workplaces um, and also asking that maternity leave in Kenya, which is three months now, uh, be, be, be increased. Uh, so we'd like to bring those bills back to see if Honorable Sabina Chege is, is ready to come back with it. Um, if not, there's, there, m myself and others are willing to take it up. Uh, to have public participation with different stakeholders uh, in the government, in the private sector, to see if we can come up with a law, you know, and move forward. We might not get everything we want at once, but uh, it would be good to see, like, some progress. 
Thank you very much, Madam Hassan, for taking the time to join us in this very important discussion. We value your time. When we come back, we'll discuss potential solutions to the challenges of being a parent of young children and what some institutions are doing to enable parents to do their jobs. But first, what's your take on this? Should the government or corporate companies have to accommodate working parents? Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our handle is at VOA, our voices. But if you are like me and you prefer to text, our WhatsApp number is on your screen. We'll be right back. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. You're with our voices here in Nairobi. Welcome back. I had a chance to talk to a few people here in the city about what their opinions were about businesses or maybe even the government providing childcare to working parents. And here's what some of them had to say. I'm a mother of two. I've been working for the last 23 years. Uh, the same challenges, uh, the same challenge I've had when I was a young mother, I realized there's still the same challenge with the current mothers. Number one, especially after maternity, mothers need enough time to breastfeed, to feed their children. Then I think sometimes three months is not enough, maybe four or five then um, they get enough time to breastfeed their children. Even at workplaces, I think there should be daycares to take care of the children. Sometimes they have to ask for off days to go and take the kids to the hospital, or sometimes house girls disappear. But you find some work environments that are not really conducive for them to take care of the children at that extent. So I believe if they can have daycare at workplaces, then it's they are better placed not to ask for so many offs, you know. Serikali imepuuza majukumu ya kushugulikia wafanya kazi. The government has neglected its duty to take care of workers, particularly those who have young children. For example, the Labor Act stipulates that new mothers should get three months of work to take care of their babies. But you find that some bosses refuse to let the women off for three months. Some women get fired when they go to breastfeed and the government does nothing when they get fired. From the company, they should actually give us like a bit of time off. I don't know, for the woman, because you really jungle a lot. Is it, is it your work? Is it your family? Is it your what? Sometimes you should just have like a, I don't know, I'm pushing it, yeah? Probably a day for the woman. Then you just relax. Let's go to the spa. Let's have fun as the girls and just reconnect with me. Because let me tell you, motherhood is not a joke. It's, it's not a walk in the park. Right, yeah. The government should support the mothers or the parents with money to support their children. Because some of them, you might find a parent having children, yet they don't have money. Oh, those are very interesting views from Nairobians regarding this issue. And to help us further understand this conversation on what can and should be done to enable working parents, especially mothers of newborns, we invited Ms. Memory Kachambwa, the executive director of FEMNET, a Pan-African women's rights organization, African Women's Development and Communication Network. Thank you very much for joining us for this conversation. We're glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Memory. So let's get right into the conversation. And I'm going to start the first question and ask about the role of men. I understand that this is <laughs> a conversation about women and, and, and what we need to do more to support women. But what about the men? I, I feel like this conversation is usually framed around women. We see it as a woman's issue. What do you think our dads could do, our brothers could do? So I think the role of men is already contested because men historically feel that women being in the workspace is taking up their space because traditionally the formal sector in terms of men going to work was seen as the sector for men, yet women were supposed to be in the domestic realm. Mm -hmm. So that already uh, creates like a layer of contestation in terms of what are women doing in this space mm -hmm. and that the way the workplace has been designed has been designed for men. For men. Yeah. Men doing their roles with a supporting woman as a wife 
doing the domestic work. So I just want to introduce something in terms of the role of men as it's important for them to work with other men, to also convince other men to take up gender roles, to take up household roles, which would support the work that uh, the women will be doing in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So men have a responsibility to make sure that that place is more inclusive for women mm -hmm. and that it does not continuously exclude women from that space. So then um, the Health Act um, uh, 2017, Section 71, um, around the issues of breastfeeding mothers um, requiring um, uh, employers to ensure that there are spaces for lactating, you know, for breastfeeding and even giving mothers intervals where they could go and breastfeed their, their children. As Feminet and with your work championing for such rights, what are your thoughts around this? Employers have really come out to fight this, but do you think if this happens, will be a win for women? Absolutely. It's, it should not even be questioned. Mm -hmm. So it should just be a standard. And what we really are pushing for is for the workplace to have the spaces that allow women to still have their reproductive role, mm -hmm. but still perform their work. Mm -hmm. And I think this all starts with the policies, like the labor policies, mm -hmm. in terms of actually making sure there is um, provision for paternity leave. Because if men also start uh, participating in the whole reproductive cycle, mm -hmm. they'll then understand why it's important to have a breastfeeding as space for women. Mm -hmm. So men, companies or private sector organizations should actually make it mandatory for men to have paternity leave mm -hmm. and to go for those paternity yeah. leave. And if it's two weeks or whatever, it's actually helping the mother mm -hmm. and not so much a, a time for them to, mm -hmm. to have space. Mm -hmm. So once we have it's more like a mind shift, more like a change in terms of the notions mm -hmm. that um, the work that women do is very important. Mm -hmm. So we need to really start shifting that, that mindset because once you shift that mindset, then you create the policies mm -hmm. that will work. And I think Kenya is mm -hmm. a good example of Safaricom in terms of yeah. what mm -hmm. they've actually totally. done. Mm -hmm. And there's always a question around, it's so expensive to build a feeding room, mm -hmm. but is it expensive to put up a toilet? Mm -hmm. Is it expensive to, to just have a basic work structure? Mm -hmm. So in that same way, budgets people who make budgets it's that important mm. so it's important in, yeah mm -hmm. in addition to what you're saying yeah. what's being done in kenya you know are there some other good practices elsewhere on the continent that can be replicated just instead of reinventing the wheel are there some um, lessons learned in some countries that you've seen that can be done here or in the next countries yeah so in zambia for example they have what they call um women's day Mm -hmm. So one day in every month, a woman is allowed to have her day off and is well, actually um, paid for. Mm -hmm. So when South African women went into parliament, one of the things that they realized is that the terms in terms of the parliamentary session were clashing with the school holidays. So they didn't have enough time to spend with, uh, with the children. So what they did is they actually lobbied to make sure that the parliamentary sessions were actually um, uh, synchronized together with the school holidays and that awesome. allowed them to spend more time with children but it just didn't benefit the women themselves but it also benefited the, the man and the whole family that's awesome. so that's an example mm. wow yeah. thank you memory yeah, before we let you go uh, do you think uh, super women exist in today's world and is this uh, a perfection that uh, many working mothers should strive for Hell no. <laughs> we never ask that question for men to be supermen. And in terms of balancing the work, it's a responsibility that I think that everyone should actually take in terms of having the policies that allow women to be able to work and function very well within the workforce as well as uh, men should do. So that should actually be more like a policy level issue mm -hmm. and that should also be a change in terms of the attitudes mm -hmm. that um, we should be pushing for. No superwoman, I don't believe in people being <laughs> super. An illusion, is And it? it's just too much pressure on women. Yeah. Women yeah. are super already. Mm -hmm. I you. don't think there's any reason why we should say superwoman. <laughs> I love that. Very Thank interesting. You. <laughs> Thank you, Memory, for your invaluable contribution to this very interesting conversation. Definitely. Girls, you must agree with me that that is one very memorable conversation. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, after the break, uh, we'll introduce you to people who have done incredible work in advocating for the support of parents in the workplace here in Kenya and elsewhere on the continent. 
do stay tuned. Every day, people in Africa and in the diaspora are making a monumental impact and advocating for their families' well-being in their communities and their countries at large. Now, this week, we are watching Dr. Mary Wayego, a neonatologist at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital here in Nairobi, who also heads the technical committee of Kenya's first ever human milk bank. She works tirelessly to make sure that mothers have safe breast milk for their newborns, a strong recommendation from the World Health Organization for mothers who are unable to breastfeed for health reasons or simply due to being in the workforce. I, you know, that's really great because I can imagine as a mother when I was breastfeeding, if I would have ran out of milk or if I was uh -huh. sick or, or just didn't have it, I would have loved to have somewhere, have a breast bank, mm -hmm. breast milk bank where I can it's actually really amazing to give see to my children. Such initiatives in, yes. in the country. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah, really, it's awesome. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, this week we're also watching a man, former Kenyan member of parliament and gubernatorial candidate Kenoti Gatobu. In 2017, Gatobu proposed a law to provide for an option to extend maternity leave by another three months without pay. And of course, we know that that law yes. did not pass. Yes. It will be also Imagine, interesting to note that he was the youngest member of parliament when they were being sworn in to the 11th parliament at only 26. And wow, was 26 man. years old. Yeah. And, and he was a man. man. The role of men and the role <laughs> of the youth. But That's he incredible. tried. He tried yeah. for us. He did. He did. <laughs> Well, we leave you with this African quote from Wajita people in northern Tanzania, Omwana ni wabone, which means regardless of a child's biological parents, its upbringing belongs to the community. And that's it for us this week. We want to thank KTA News for partnering with us on this co-production of Our Voices. On behalf of my colleague and I, Ian Bior, we want to thank our new friends, uh, Akisa Wandera <laughs> and Queen Mbori Saina. Yes. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you Thank for you having us. Yes. This was fun. And to our viewers, that's it. Thank you so much. Good day.